A report from Kentucky says the FBI may be looking into controversial pardons made by former Republican Governor Matt Bevin. Lawmakers from both parties say they're concerned that some of Bevin's last-minute pardons before he left office were favors to supporters. Don Daler spoke to a mother who wishes she was warned that her daughter's rapist was going free. So, Don, how many people were pardoned? Well, Bevin granted more than 400 pardons and commutations. Some went to convicted murderers. Another went to a man who served less than two years for the rape of a nine-year-old. But his lawyer tells us he's innocent. He says the governor got it right and the pardon was not bought. It just felt like a slap in the face. Felt like a ton of bricks hit me. I just kind of collapsed to the floor sobbing and crying. This mother, who asked us to conceal her identity to protect her family, says she was given no warning that Micah Schottel, the man convicted of repeatedly sexually assaulting her daughter, was going free. I wish Bevan would have come and talked to me first uh, before he gave Micah a pardon. Um, and that was never done. Schottel served just 19 months of a 23-year sentence. I was shocked to hear that he was even considering a pardon for Micah Schottel, much less granting one. Kentucky Public Prosecutor Rob Sanders helped put Shottle behind bars. This was a very, very lengthy case that was litigated heavily. To hear that he was basically erasing all the work that we had done was just shocking. In a radio interview last week, Bevan, a father of nine, defended his pardon of Shottle by claiming there was no physical evidence. If you have been repeatedly sexually violated as a small child by an adult, there are going to be repercussions of that physically and medically. A 2012 study found that about 90 percent of child victims don't show physical evidence of abuse. This isn't a Democrat prosecutor coming after a Republican governor. I was a supporter of Matt Bevins, but what he has done is just absolutely wrong. The problem is he's granted hundreds of pardons to people with little or no research into who they are, what they did, or whether or not they've turned their lives around and are worthy of a pardon. As for the victim's family. I think my daughter is going to return to counseling uh, because she has read Bevins' comments about her, and I know it upsets her. Other than that, we're just kind of taking one day at a time. Sanders says they have opened an investigation into Shottle's pardon. He says the governor's pardon file includes letters from the defendant and his family, but nothing from the victim, police, or prosecutor's case. They're looking at how the case got onto the governor's desk and if there were any favors involved. It's, it's like victimizing this poor girl all over again. Absolutely. Her, there's yeah. no doubt. Yeah. I mean, and then to hear... The former governor say he spent thousands of hours looking at everything again. Obviously, they have this power. Yeah. But you have to wonder, especially when it comes to this case. I mean, child sexual abuse allegations and then the man's convicted. Well, haven't you always wondered about the whole concept of pardons? They go through yeah. the court system. They go through the appeals system. Mm -hmm. And then a governor or a president can pardon someone who was convicted by their peers. It's always well. There are cases where the pardons, because of evidence that was collected during the trial and or, or later, the case. exactly right. But yeah. this does seem disturbing, and as you point out, Dana, it feels like it's revictimizing uh, yeah. the victim and the family. You hear that mom there. Thank you, Don. Sure.